On behalf of the President, the Honorable Trustees, and the esteemed committee members of the organizer of tonight's program, the Islamic Propagation Society International, IPSI of Penang, I, Mohammed Sirajuddin, being the moderator, welcome you all once again with the universal greetings of peace and blessings. Assalamu alaikum. Warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Which means May the peace and blessings of Allah The Almighty Descend upon all of you All praise is due to Allah The one true God Who has neither partners nor equals And who is indeed the cherisher And the sustainer of the worlds Peace and blessings upon his noble prophet and final messenger sent to the whole of humanity, Muhammad al Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whom the Holy Quran dignifies as the mercy to the entire creation. Therefore, to do justice upon such a central and essential topic, we are once again tremendously honored to have with us tonight our esteemed guest speaker, Maulana Sheikh Imran Hussein. Just as last night, I will not take the trouble of introducing him to you, since he's already a family member and no longer a stranger, therefore no introduction is required. But if you need to, if you wish to know him better, you can do so through the books that he has written, which are available outside, as well as through his official website at imranhussein.org. And now, Without further ado, I call upon Sheikh Imran Hussein to enlighten us on what the Quran teaches about the end of times. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi al-ladhina as-safa khususan ala al-dalihim wa khatamin nabiyin Muhammadin al-amin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi al-ma'in wa ba'd فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإن من قرية إلا نحن أهلكوها قبل يوم القيامة أو معذبوها عذابا شديدا كان ذلك في الكتاب مصور صدق الله العظيم. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all of His noble messages. And in particular on the last of them all, the Blessed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam Surah Al-Isra of the Quran Surah number 17 And listen to the word of Allah وَإِمْ مِنْ قَرِيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُهْلِكُوهَا قَوْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَ نَحْنُ a single town or city will escape. But we will destroy them all before the end of the world. And those which escape destruction, I don't know if KL, KL will escape. And those which escape destruction, will be punished with terrible punishment. And this is something inscribed in the book. 
do srdca. Ešte zvykám probášiť sa, zvykám to malá. Brother Chairman, respected president and officers of IPSI, brothers and sisters in Finan, in Malaysia, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to tonight's, the second and last of two lectures. Last night we looked, or we revisited, one year later, the topic of an Islamic analysis of the current Arab uprisings, which included insurrections as well as uprisings. And we said that these events are not taking place in the vacuum. There are other things happening in the world at the same time. And we pointed among other things to the imminent death of Salatul Janaza for the US dollar, which is going to be a cataclysmic event in world affairs, when it happens. And it can happen any time now. We said last night that elementary strategic and military analysis would allow us to recognize that an attack on Iran, a Zionist attack on Iran, will most probably eventually culminate in world war that would be nuclear war. This is not terribly sophisticated analysis, it is elementary analysis. And so the events that are occurring in the Arab world are not doing so in a vacuum. We said there's a big picture, a big picture. And we in Islam, we have knowledge of that big picture, which has come to us from a book, which says that it is the uncorrupted word of God, the one God the uncorrupted word of the one God, the God of Abraham, alayhi salam. And there is, at the very outset, startling evidence to confirm the validity of its claim. Which book in history has survived for more than a thousand years, has survived for 1400 years with its text without a single change of a sentence, of a word, of a single letter, not a single change. The text of that book, as it exists today, in written form, and in the hearts of millions who have memorized it, most of them non-Arabs, that text has remained absolutely the same as it was at that time. And all around the world today, despite the efforts of those in whose heart there is hostility and hatred and eternal enmity for Islam. Every single copy of that book in the world today is the same as every other copy. That by itself is startling evidence to wake up those who need a wake-up call. The big picture that we recognize in Islam 
which explains the reality of the world today and allows us to anticipate tomorrow and also the end has also come to us from a man who as I said last night never went to school never went to university no in his book in his house you would not find a single book because he couldn't even read you will not find anything that he wrote because he couldn't write who never traveled out of the vicinity of the land in which he was born the father's journey was to Damascus who had no teacher a learned scholar like I was blessed to have Maulana Dr. Muhammad Fadlur Rahman Rahimah Ansari Rahimahullah he never had any teacher and yet that man and that book has given us more accurate information that exists anywhere underneath the sun today explaining the reality of the world today giving us the big picture and allowing us to anticipate tomorrow I don't know whether I mentioned it last night and you know beating your own drum is something bad boasting is something terrible and pride in a scholar is disaster because Allah will take away your knowledge and you, you remain an ignorant fool so we do not say these things in pride boasting or beating our drums or so no how is it that it is possible for your brother Imran more than 15 years ago to anticipate that the US dollar is going to collapse I said more than that I said it must collapse and when it does, it must bring down the entire monetary system. No monetary economist in the whole world said that. Where did I get the knowledge from? I got it from those two sources, from the Quran and from Nabi Muhammad And so I have commenced tonight's lecture with just a little bit of evidence arguing the case that what the Quran presents on the last stage deserves serious attention for those who have not as yet recognized it as the uncorrupted word of the one God and for those who have not as yet recognized that this man spoke the truth Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu when he said that I have been appointed as the prophet of the one God the last of all prophets the Quran makes a distinction between the end of the world when the mountains will be like pieces of cotton wool flying away and the graves are going to pitch out of their bosom their burdens and on that day the earth will speak and then you don't need to listen to CNN anymore to know who committed 9-11 that is the end of the world and then all of mankind including their excellencies and Tunku and Tun and Tatu and everybody are going to have to stand before Allah naked no clothes not even for the king and on that day the first to get clothing to cover himself would be Ibrahim alayhi salam the prophet Abraham 
That will be the day of the resurrection. That will be the day of the judgment. When will that day come? I don't know. You don't know. No one knows. Only Allah knows. And so we are not talking tonight about the end of the world. In our conception of the last age, there is another end which precedes the end of the world. Five years ago, right here in this hall, we delivered a lecture, Islam and the End of History. Some of you may have attended that lecture. That Islam recognizes an end of history which will precede the end of the world. When that end of history takes place, then truth will triumph over all rivals. Allah speaks in the Quran and He says, فَعَدَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ هو الذي He it is أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ who has sent his messenger بِالْهُدَى with the guidance وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ with the way of life of truth his messenger being Muhammad alayhi salatu wa sallam the way of life of truth was given the name not by Imran, not by you, not by her, it was given by Allah as Al-Islam and Al-Islam does not mean the name of a new religion Al-Islam means the way of life of submission to the one God لِيُذْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّ He has sent it that it might prevail over all rivals. And so that which came with Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is destined according to this book. Before the end of the world is destined to prevail over all rivals. And that is the end of history. History ends with the validation of truth over all rivals and with the triumph of justice over injustice and oppression. The Quran gives us many signs by which we can recognize that end of history, that Akhirul Zaman, or last age. And Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu islam also gave us many times. So if you never met him before, tonight you will meet Muhammad alayhi salatu islam. 1400 years ago in the desert of Arabia, he said that the time will come when women will be dressed and would yet be naked. Only a prophet of God could speak like that. 1400 years ago. He said that women would dress like men. Is that happening today? And when they dress like men, it's because they want to fulfill the functional role of men in society. And so he speaks about a feminist revolution which is going to come. He said that men will dress like women. Men will dress like women. Now don't be annoyed with me. You will be annoyed in the lecture, but after the lecture we must be friends, huh? The first thing a man has to do 
if he wants to dress like a woman, it's too far to the bed. Why would men want to dress like women? Answer, to attract another man. That's why. And so history will end down Broadway in Manhattan with one million people marching every year in the Gay and Lesbian Rights Day Parade. And it hasn't reached the heart as yet, but it's coming to the heart. And those of you who have been reading the newspapers in Malaysia would know things are happening in Malaysia as well. Here is startling evidence, as dazzling as the sunshine. But this man spoke the truth. How did he get that knowledge 1400 years ago in the desert? He spoke about riba. One form of riba is money being lent on interest. The money lender, you know, is despised. You know about that great sheikh from Britain? One of the greatest sheikhs ever produced by Britain. He wrote a magnificent play on riba. The name of the play was Merchant of Venice. What was the name of the Sheikh? Shakespeare. William Shakespeare. The money lender. The money lender in Merchant of Venice was a Jew named Shaira. Money lending is not meant only to make the money lender wealthy. It's a more sinister agenda. And if you read John Perkins, try to get that book, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Alhamdulillah, he wrote it. If I had written it, nobody would believe it. You know that money lending is also for another sinister agenda. The money lender lends you money to enslave you. And then there is that other part of riba which is a transaction based on deception through which you are ripped off. And there has not, never been a greater rip-off since Father Adam alayhi salam set foot on earth than the rip-off of this bogus and utterly fraudulent and utterly haram Paper money. Fourteen hundred years ago, the revelation came down in the Quran, declaring war on the money lender. War. That's how serious Islam is about money lending. And fourteen hundred years ago, Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam cursed. He cursed all four. And he said they are equally guilty. The one who takes riba. The one who gives riba. The one who records the transaction. And the two witnesses. And he's cursed them. And if you have the curse of the prophet upon you, you can go to the masjid and come back home, and go to the masjid and come back home, and go to the masjid and come back home. It's not going anywhere. Your salat will not be accepted. Your fasting will not be accepted. Your zakat will not be accepted. Nothing. If you have the curse of a prophet upon you. But 1400 years ago he said that the time will come when you will not be able to find a single person in all of mankind who would not be consuming riba. And whosoever says that he is not consuming riba, verily the dust of riba would be upon him. 
very little bit of, of rebirth would be upon him. This is God age. None of us stays free from rebirth. How did he know that? Here is evidence as dazzling as the sunshine. That this man is speaking the truth and he is indeed a prophet of the one true God. The companions were sitting amongst themselves talking. When he the prophet came and asked, What are you talking about? And they said, we talking about the signs of the last day. And he said that the last day would not come until, and he mentioned ten signs. Ten. Try to memorize them, Junaid, before you leave tonight. Ten signs. They were not given in the order in which they will occur, the chronological sequence. So we don't know which one comes first and which one comes second. So number one, the job, the false messiah who wants to impersonate the true messiah, the true messiah being the son of Mary. The Christians call him the Antichrist. Number two, God and Magog. Yes, Jude and not Jude. This book is the first book in the modern age. And it's not in view of God and Magog in the modern world to attempt to explain the subject in a scholarly way. When you look at the rest of the literature on the subject, it's not being disrespectful, but it does not qualify as scholarly books. Number three. The return of the son of Mary, number four, Duhan, spoke. Could it be from nuclear warfare? Number five, the battle of a beast of the earth. And the Quran speaks about that beast. And the revelation came down verbally. And then the Prophet would recite it and it would be written down. But in Arabic you have vowels. And unless you put in the vowels, sometimes a word can be pronounced two ways. Like El, the knowledge. But the same spelling is Alam. Sign. <laughs> so very here to Kalimo home the beast will speak. But Kalimo home the beast will wound you. So a beast of the earth, in my opinion, Kalimo home will wound you. Number six, that the sun will rise from the west. Number seven, eight, and nine, three sinkings of the earth, an earthquake which results in a sinking of the earth. The earth sinks and it swallows what it swallows. One in the east, one in the west, and the third one in Arabia. And that is the one that will validate the claim of Imam al Mahdi. Number ten. The fire will come out of Yemen. The Saudis don't like to hear that at all. <laughs> A fire will come out of Yemen and will drive people to their place of assembly. These are known as the ten major signs of the last day. In addition to these, there are so many other are called minor signs, although I don't see anything minor about them. And we now turn to the Quran 
with these ten signs in the back of our mind. To see what does the Quran have to say about Akhir Zaman or the last few. Pharaoh was arrogant. He was an oppressor. He was powerful. He had power. He declared that I am the Lord. Ana Rabbukum al You must worship me. That was Pharaoh. Musa alayhi salam did not have any helicopter gunships. He didn't have any tanks. He didn't have any guns. No. All that he had was the truth. Why is this only going down? <laughs> like the American dollar. <laughs> and there was a clash between arrogant power and those who were weak and helpless. <coughs> between forces of falsehood and oppression and the forces of the truth. In that epic encounter, Allah said signs. These were ten. Those were nine. I don't have the time to remind you about what the nine signs were. But at the end of it all, there was a final showdown. And in that final showdown, anyone with a knowledge of strategic thinking and military affairs would have concluded confidently that this was the end for Moses and for his followers. There is no hope left for you. You are between the devil and the deep blue sea. And it's only a matter of time before you be liquidated. But if you have the truth in your heart, you will never lose it. No, you will never lose it. And at the very last moment, Allah said to Musa alayhi salam, strike the water with your rod. And then the water parted. Wa is farakana bikum al And you were saved. Not only was there space, but it became hard enough to walk across. Wa agrakna ala fir'aun. Pharaoh and his armed forces were destroyed. And it happened before your very eyes. While Pharaoh was drowning, something happened. Allah took the veil from off his eyes. And he suddenly realized he was blood. You know that the Japanese emperor? After the Second World War, realized he was in God and made an announcement to the Japanese people. <laughs> he is not God. And then he declared his faith in the God of Banu Israel, the Israelite people. This happened underneath the water. So don't look up any history books for the evidence. Eh? Only one person knows of what happened underneath the water. And that is the God of Moses. When he declared his faith, then Allah responded. And this is in Surah 2, Yunus. Which is Surah number 10. Surah entitled Jonah. And listen to the words of the Quran. Al-An. Now, Pharaoh, 
وَقَدْ عَصَيْتَ قَبْلُ And before this you were in arrogant rejection. وَقُنْجَ مِنَا مُفْسِدِينَ And you were perpetrating facade on the earth. You were oppressing the people. فَلْيَوْمَ نُنَجِيكَ بِبَدَنِكَ This day we have decided to preserve your physical body. لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْبَكَ آيَةً That your physical body, when it resurfaces in the historical process, when it is rediscovered at that time, would function as a sign. لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْبَكَ آيَةً it would function as a sign for a people to come after you. وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ عَنْ آيَاتِنَا لَغَفِّرُونَ But most people, too busy. You know the morning traffic and then the afternoon traffic. Television takes up so much time. They don't have time for monitoring the signs of Allah unfolding in the world. What the Quran is saying here is that in Akhir zaman a major sign will occur and that is the body of Pharaoh will be discovered. When that body is discovered then the countdown begins. <coughs> for a re-enactment, a replay, replay of that epic encounter between truth and falsehood, between justice and oppression, between Pharaoh and Moses. When that body is discovered, then there will be a people at that time who will live the way he lived, arrogantly declaring themselves to be the supreme being. Everybody must bow down to them. And if you don't bow down to them, you suffer the fate of Ghazafi. Arrogant oppressors trampling upon the face of the earth with their bloody feet, holding on to falsehood and demonizing the truth, waging war on Islam. And when that time comes, they, because they will live the way Pharaoh lived, they will die the way he died. And that's how history will end. <laughs> when was the body of Pharaoh discovered? I think it was 1897. And what happened at Syria? The Zionist movement was established in the same year that the body of Pharaoh is discovered. The same Zionist movement which today has as its military arm, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. Mm -hmm. And so the Quran is telling us that those who today rule the world, oppressing mankind, wicked people, Barbaric oppression, waging war on the truth. That history is going to end with their destruction. But when the time comes for them to die, they have to die the way he died. Meaning, the veils must be taken off their eyes and they'll be able to see this is the truth, is the Quran. 
And this is the truth with Muhammad alayhi salatu wa sallam. And he was the truth, the son of Mary. She was a virgin. And he was indeed the Messiah. That is the truth. And then they lie. Swallowing all the vomit that will come out of them at that last moment. This is Surah to you, Surah to Yunus of the Quran. And this is what we are now experiencing in the world. This is the big picture in a nutshell from this one verse of the Quran. Now let us expand the picture. And we go now to Surah to Nisa. And if this was not in the Quran, they would accuse me of anti-Semitism. وَقَوْرِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَ بِنَّ مَرْيَمَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ They boasted. We have killed him. The Messiah, it is sarcasm because they rejected him. They said, he is a bastard. وَنَوْذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ هَذَا The son of Mary. We have killed him. The Messiah. The son of Mary. The messenger of Allah. Sarcastic language. Because they rejected all of them. But Allah says, no. No, sir. You did not succeed in number one. You did not kill him. You did not seek succeed in number two. You did not succeed in crucify him. No. Number three, Allah made it appear to you like that. Number four will be a little bit too technical for me to mention now. So let's leave it up. And number five, Allah raised it. One day he's going to come back. Because he never experienced mouth. Mouth is when Allah takes the soul and does not return it. And does not return it. Then that is mouth. So he's going to come back one day. But now listen to what follows. In mid surah, surah to Nisa. None of them will escape. You will all, they will all have to believe in him before his death. And even though they declare their faith in him, when? When he returns. When he returns, all the Jews, all the Jews will say, yes, this is the, the true Messiah, the Son of Mary. And even though they make this declaration at the last moment, it will be of no benefit to them. He will give evidence against them and they go into the hellfire. And so at that last moment of the end of history, history will repeat itself. Exactly what happened underneath the water will now happen one more time. We have a sister from Palestine here tonight. It must be comforting to her heart. She's from, she's from Gaza. So she knows more about oppression than any one of us here. So it must be comforting to the heart of the oppressed when they hear these words from the Quran. I was in New Jersey giving a lecture to the Jews in a synagogue for 200 of them. And I quoted this verse of the Quran and I said, this is what's going to happen to you. That you will have to accept Jesus as the true Messiah on that day when he returns. You have no choice. When the lecture was over, they surrounded me. <laughs> you should be there to see it. 
they were baffled, they were exasperated, they were angry, they demanded from me, why should we have to believe in that which we have rejected? So I said to them on that day, Allah will take the veil from off your eyes. They never invited me back to that synagogue. <laughs> and so now from these two verses of the Quran, we have a big picture emerging of what is going to happen at the end of history when Jesus returns. But the Quran also gives us another sign, which is before this moment when Jesus returns, telling us about the end of history, Akhir al-Zaman. At the beginning of Surah Al-Isra, Allah speaks about Badu Israel, the Israelite people, and of the facade that they will commit. Facade is not just that which corrupts, but corrupts and destroys. And uh, the Quran speaks of agricultural facade, <laughs> meaning destruction of food. That's happening now, isn't it? It speaks about sexual facade, Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. That's happening now, isn't it? It speaks of many different forms of facade other than uh, oppression, military oppression. And then the Quran says about Banu Israel that they will commit facade on the earth twice. Two major events of facade. And this will happen in the Ard, meaning Al Ardul Muqaddasa, the Holy Land, from where she comes. The Holy Land. When the first facade took place, we know what happened. They rewrote the Bible. <laughs> For example, Allah had prohibited money being lent on interest. No one should be annoyed with us for speaking this because it's the truth. And someone rewrote the Bible. So it now says today that it is prohibited for an Israelite to lend money on interest to another Israelite. Don't do that to your own brother. But it is permissible for an Israelite. Lend money on interest to those who are not Israelite. Talk about double standards. Talk about double standards. I can't find the words with which to condemn this. No, this could not come from the one God. It came from somebody's dirty pen. This was facade, money lending on interest. And Allah says that I punished them. Even though the Holy Land has been given to them. Already? Was the Holy Land given to the whole Israelite people? Does the Quran say so? Oh, come on, Imran, what is this? Is it there in Surah Al Ma'idah? Let's see. Yeah. Musa alayhi salam says to Banu Israel, Surah Al Ma'idah, verse number 24. Ya qawmi dukhulu al ard al muqaddasata allati katab Allah lakum ila akhir al ayah. Yes, Allah gave the land to them. Allah gave the land to them. How come CNN is not broadcasting that? What's wrong with CNN? You don't know that Allah gave the land to them? How come the New York Times is not publishing that on the front page? That the Quran says that Allah gave the Holy Land to Banu Israel. Isn't it strange? Isn't it mysterious? There must be 
be a cockroach somewhere here, isn't it? There's a reason why we'll, they will not quote the Quran. I'll tell you why. Allah did not give the land to them unconditionally. Allah gave the land to them conditionally. And righteousness was the condition. وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّهُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ Righteousness is the condition. And when you violate the condition of righteousness, Allah throws you out of the Holy Land. And the first time he sent a Babylonian army, worshipping the stars, worshipping idols. And he calls them Ibadan Lana Uribatsin Shaheed. And that Babylonian army destroyed the holy state of Israel, destroyed the temple, the masjid, and took them into Babylon as slaves. That is the punishment for violating the covenant of righteous conduct in the holy land. Then Allah allowed them to return. All of this is at the beginning of Surah Al-Isra. And when He allowed them to return, they rebuilt the temple. They restored the state. There were numerous numbers. And then again, and then came a period of fasad. This time they killed the prophets of Allah. Zakaria alayhi salam inside the masjid they slaughtered him. Yahya alayhi salam to a conspiracy he loses his head. And then they boasted of how they killed Jesus, the son of Mary. And then Allah punished them a second time. This time with a Roman army. And they were expelled. The masjid was destroyed again. And this time when he expelled them, وَقَطَّعَنَاهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أُمَّمْ he broke them up into bits and pieces and scattered them all over the world. And he said, in autumn, Udna. In autumn, Udna. If you return to this holy land with your oppression, I will return with my punishment. The first time it was a Babylonian army. The second time it was a Roman army that worshipped Zeus and Venus and Mars. And guess who it will be the third time? Guess who it will be? The army that will liberate the Holy Land the third time. This is Islam and Nahirul But when he expelled them from the Holy Land, this time, he then declared, and now we go to Surah Al Anbiya, we're not going to be able to do all the verses of the Quran tonight. That's not possible. You're only going to get a few of it, but enough for you to see what the Quran is saying about Akhirul Zaman. Listen to what he says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Al-Anbiya. Ba'ad a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan wa haramun ala qariyatin. أهلكناها أنهم لا يرجعون. I have been reciting this verse this way for 15 years now, word by word. Because most Arabs, when they hear it, they do the hearing it for the first time. وحرام على قريه Allah has destroyed a town or city. 
the Korean. And having destroyed it, he has expelled the people of the town. And then he's placed a ban on them that they can never return. They can come back as tourists, that's okay. <laughs> but you cannot return to reclaim this town as your own. Jaburi, not possible. Hatta. Until? Until when? Hatta iza futi hat. يأجوج ومأجوج وهم من كل حدب ينسيرون If my brother Dr. Mohamed Baham Bilal Fris were here tonight we'd have a very interesting session You cannot return until Gog and Magog are released And the Prophet said no, it's not the Prophet Islam. It is the word of Allah, but in a hadith. So hadith are good. In Sahih Muslim, about Gaga Magad. I have created creatures of mine so powerful that none but I can destroy them. That's Gaga Magad. Read this book of Gaga Magad. They can never return to reclaim this town as their own until Gog and Magog are released. And when they are released, they spread out in all directions and therefore with their irresistible power, they take control of the world. So now you have the world order of Gog and Magog. A world of facade. Facade everywhere. Biological facade, agricultural facade, electronic facade, medical facade, economic facade, monetary facade, military facade. They will spread out in all directions and take control of the world in their irresistible grip. And then you will see these people being brought back to this town to reclaim it as it so as their own. This is Surah to Ambiya. The same thing is now mentioned at the end of Surah to Isra. Allah says at the end of Surah Al-Isra, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعَدُ الْآخِرَةِ When the last warning comes, the time of the last warning, the countdown, جِئْنَا بِكُمْ جِئْنَا بِكُمْ لَفِيفًا We're going to bring you back to the Holy Land. And when we bring you back, you would have so much diversity in your midst. Because remember, you were scattered all over the world. So some of you are going to come back with an, an Iranian belly, and others with a Yemeni belly, and some with a Moroccan belly. We have two Moroccans here with us tonight. Speaking different languages. Wearing different clothing. Jitna bikum lafifa. So when you see that happening, you know this is the countdown of the end time. And which town is it? I wrote this book 11 years ago, 10 years ago. 10 years ago. And argued in this book that the town is Jerusalem. I was not the first. My teacher also came to the same conclusion, but I was not aware of it when I wrote this book. I came to the conclusion that the town in Jerusalem, not true, guess what? But by using a particular methodology that I spoke of yesterday, he ordered the angels to bow down, to submit 
to make Sejda. And they all made Sejda except Iblis. If you take this verse by itself, the logical conclusion is Iblis has to be an angel. Satan has to be an angel. Because the order was given to the angels. That is a defective methodology. And Allah is not deficient in the use of language. So he has constructed this sentence in this way to teach a lesson on methodology. Praise be to Allah. Who not only sends the book and not only sends the teacher to teach the book, but in the book itself it teaches us how to study the book. When we go to the rest of the book and get all the other verses pertaining to this subject, we say, no. If this disobey, angels don't disobey. No. An angel cannot disobey. So if your wife disobeys, you know she's not an angel. <laughs> Angels cannot disobey. وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ And they have to do whatever they are ordered to do. So it is impossible for an angel to disobey. But he disobeyed. <laughs> so he could not have been an angel. This is the methodology now that must be applied. Which town is it? When you go to the totality of the verses of the Qur'an and supported by the Ahadith, which I've done in this book, the conclusion is that the town has to be Jerusalem. So Allah is saying, based on our interpretation, you do not have to accept my interpretation. In fact, I will be very pleased when you do not accept my interpretation until you are convinced that it is correct. Out of respect for your own intellect. If my interpretation is correct, then the Quran is saying that Allah destroyed Jerusalem. He then expelled the Jews. He cut them up into bits and pieces and scattered all over the world, which is a historical fact. He then placed a ban on them that they could never return to reclaim that land. And for 2,000 years, they could not return to reclaim the town as their home. Today they have returned. The implication would be that those who made it possible for them to return are Gog and Magog. Those who made possible the creation of the state of Israel are Gog and Magog. Those who have protected Israel to all these 50 miserable years are Gog and Magog. Those who did 9-11 and for the last 10 years have been setting fires all over the place, Agar and Magar. And all of this was preparatory to the wars which are now about to commence. Gog and Magar are doing this so that they can deliver to Israel the rule over the world. So that when Israel rules the world, a man would stand up in Jerusalem, ruling over Jerusalem, ruling over Israel. He would not be Mr. President. He would not be Mr. Prime Minister. Why? Because David, alayhi salam, was the king. And Solomon, alayhi salam, was the king. So monarchy will have to come back to Israel. And from Jerusalem, he'll be ruling the world the way George Bush was ruling the world. You know, Obama is not doing that. They control Obama. And that man will say, I am the Messiah. This is the Quran. This is Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam. 
explaining the end of history as no other can explain it. When that man stands up there and declares, I am the Messiah, Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam described him to us. Did you hear that? Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam living in the desert of Arabia 1400 years ago described that man to us. He said he'll be a Jew, born of Jewish parents. He said he'll be a young man. So tomorrow young people are going to rule the world. He said he'd be powerful even. He said he'd have curly hair. And so tomorrow we'll see that man with all of these descriptions. My guess from my study of Islamic eschatology is that we are probably about 25 or 30 years away. I can be wrong. Plausible guesswork. So don't spring me up. Eh? <laughs> about 25, 30 years from now, I'm guessing. The reason why I'm guessing is because I don't want you to be believing you're away 200 years. Or 300 years. But before he can declare, I am the Messiah, Israel must replace the United States of America as the next ruling state of the world. In the same way that Pax Americana replaced Pax Britannica, so too must Pax Judaica replace Pax Americana. And last night we pointed out what is the process which was being used to bring down the United States? It was a monetary attack on the dollar. The dollar is not collapsing by accident. It's a pre-planned, incremental demolition of the U.S. dollar by the banking industry, the Zionist control bank. The collapse of the U.S. economy and then a trap, a military trap for the United States. When these things happen, you see Israel taking over. Israel cannot rule the world unless Israel establishes its political and economic dominion over the Arabs. And so the Arab Spring was meant to prepare the way for the destruction of the Arabs. We you have long to wait for that? Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, I must end this lecture now, it's already an hour and a quarter. Otherwise it just goes endlessly. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam prophesied. He said the Arabs would be wiped out by plague. I think I mentioned that last night, did I? The Arabs are going to be wiped out by plague or biological warfare. But let me turn now to a last hadith and let us end so we can have an interesting question and answer session. The Prophet of Islam was asleep at the home of his wife Zainab from the Allah Ta'ala and he saw something in his sleep, Rukhya a vision. And it was terrible. And he woke up from his sleep. And his face was flushed red. So it had to be really bad. And he woke up with these words. Wail lil Arab. Woe unto the Arabs, not the Malay, <laughs> not the Chinese, not the Africans, not the Turks, 
وَهِلُّ لِلْعَرَبِ وَأَنْتُ الْعَرَبِ مِنْ شَرٍ قَدْ اكْتَرَبَ Because of a great evil which is now approaching, it is close. And then he raised his hands like this, making a circle. And he said, today, today, a hole has been made in the barrier built by Zulkarnain. <coughs> when Zulkarnain had reached that place, the people asked him to build a sun so that they could be protected from Gog and Magog. When he replied, he said, I will build for you a rudder which is a specific kind of sun, not just any barrier, but a barrier which is in the form of a dam. And he asked for blocks of iron. For the masawa bayna sadafain. Sadafain are like the two sides of a shell which has been opened. Look. Two sides of a shell, Sadafe, which has been opened like this. So he's filling up this space like a dam. And he calls it Rada. This book actually has the photographs of that space. And in this hadith we are told, today a hole has been made in the Rada, not Sad. Rada of Zulkarnay. Then Zainab asked Radiallahu ta'ala anha Al-Nuhliya Will we be destroyed? Rufina Salihu While there are righteous people amongst us Will we, the Arabs, be destroyed? O Prophet of Allah When there are righteous people amongst us. Listen to the answer. He said, no. Yes, you will be destroyed. When? Ida Kathur al Khabat. When Khabat prevails. When Khabat prevails. At that time, you'll be destroyed. Who or what is the Khabas? Khabas is things which are nasty, dead, filthy. Who are those who rule over the Ummah of Muhammad? Who are those who are the guides of the Ummah of Muhammad? Is it the Prime Minister? And the Minister of the Government in Malaysia? Forget that, that's nonsense. Al ulama wa rasatul anbiya. It is the scholars of Islam. They are the guides of the Ummah. When the scholars of Islam in the Arab world become like Kaaba, at that time you'll be destroyed. Yesterday Dr. Yusuf al Karadawi, whom I've always respected as a man of great learning, until I got to know more about him and more about Qatar. Yesterday Dr. Yusuf al Karadawi made a public announcement, naturally from the Zionist organ called Al Jazeera. Calling upon the Arabs and calling upon Muslims around the world to boycott Russian and Chinese products in retaliation for the Russian and Chinese double veto in the Security Council. Why? Because Dr. Yusuf al Karadari wants Syria to become another Libya. Libya, which today is under the control of NATO. And I quoted for you a verse yesterday, and I don't have the time to repeat it today. 
where Allah is anticipating a time when Jews and Christians are going to come together and form a Jewish Christian alliance. Today it's here in the Zionist alliance. And NATO is the military arm of all of Zionism. And Allah says, you are prohibited from maintaining friendly ties and being allies of such people. And those of you who become their friends and allies, you lose your Islam. That's Qatar today. That's Saudi Arabia today. That's Dr. Yusuf al Qadarabi today. And so wait, it should not be long. When Khabat prevails, then the destruction <coughs> will come. I've taken too much of your time tonight and I apologize for that. But there's homework to be done. You must now go back to the Quran. My books will help you. I've done all this research all these years after being taught by that great scholar to help you. But you must do the work. You have to go back to the Quran and go back to Muhammad alayhi salatu that they can explain to you Akhir al And may Allah bless that effort with success. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka inta s-sameer alim wa tuba alina ya mulana inna ka inta s-sawab rahim wa rahmatika ya rahmatika ya rahmatika ya rahmatika ya Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah, our deepest appreciation to our honorable speaker, Sheikh Imran Hussain for having enlightened us on this such a momentous subject in such a down-to-earth and very practical manner. Through his presentation and shrewd analysis of the issues involved, Sheikh Imran has made it much easier for us, Alhamdulillah, to comprehend the events unfolding right in front of our eyes and be better prepared for the future, both physically as well as spiritually, to face whatever challenges that are meant for us. We now have the choice of taking his instructions and advice seriously and act upon it, or to turn away from what has been taught and face the consequences in this world and in the hereafter. For Allah the Most High, the Most Merciful, the Most Benevolent, Allah has given every one of us the free will, the choice to choose and act upon. Our hope and prayer is that we will do so wisely and allow our heart, mind and soul to be guided by the divine revelation as contained in the sacred scripture. And we pray constantly to Allah for such guidance to be forever with us. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I would now like to call upon the Honorable President and Founder of the Islamic Propagation Society International, IPSI, Brother Kamaruddin Abdullah, to deliver his note of appreciation to the speaker, the audience, and everyone involved in making this program a success. Brother Kamaruddin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد يا جماعة برد السراج يا نور بوم استنجش سكارا العالم شيخ إمام حسين أو بلوك مينتو سنز مينتيس ما شاء الله the man who responsible to bring this logo shining, and it's now shining, Mishra Alhamdulillah. Dear trustees of IPSI, the committee members of IPSI, the donors of IPSI, brothers and sisters as a guest of our event, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us this blessing in Penang Island that we have been inviting since 1997 until today, scholars after scholars to share with you the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was giving, giving IPSI the biggest blessing where we used to be free, public talk, until recently 
my committee members say, why don't we charge something? At first I was resistant, you know, people might be very calculative. <laughs> now my age is, I'm young in the heart, 17 years old, my heart says 17 years old. But my body is not that strong anymore. So it's time has come for us. You see, you can see grey hair coming up from the general. And we also are having grey hair. So we say, better be charged for the survival of this organization so that we can bring more speaker. After all, 20 ringgit for two nights, compared to $286 per seat in this land, you make your choice. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, uh, I took this short opportunity to thank all of you uh, to attend this event. And alhamdulillah, I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hall is crowded. And also a good news, a week or two, Penang IPSI is going to make an history. We're going to have our own building, four story, and we're going to conduct more classes, more permanent classes in the field of theology, in the field of tafsir, in the field of hadith, and in counseling the reverse, and counseling the one who's going to leave Islam. So Alhamdulillah, everything is given free. So, but as my brother Chairman said, the money doesn't drop from the heaven. And I can't pluck from any trees. I only can pluck mangoes, you know, arambutan. So, it's your generous support. Uh, yesterday we was counting the money. Since we have charged you, our donation only yesterday, 100 ringgit. 100 ringgit. So, Brothers and sisters, when you give to us, you're not giving to our pocket. You're giving to the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Baqarah 260, the scholar is here, he can elaborate to you. When you give in the heart of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is going to manifold into hundreds and hundreds. But you will never see today, but the moment it has changed, the moment you enter the graveyard, you will see your share. I cannot promise you anything, brothers and sisters. Give your support, with the support of the scholars, inshallah we can move forward and create more uh, programs for you. And I thank once again Sheikh Ran for your kind lecture and your trouble to come all over to Japan. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks to Brother Kamaluddin. Now, alhamdulillah, all things must eventually come to an end, and as such, we are now at the end of my program. As a reminder, the books by Sheikh Imran are still available at the foyer and you are told that it's a flying off the shelf very fast. There are only a few copies available of each title, so please grab them as soon as possible as you leave the hall and Sheikh Imran will be here to uh, autograph them. And you will also find a whole set of Sheikh Imran's lectures in DVD and CD being sold at a very reasonable price. Among the titles include those which have been presented tonight and that of last night. So we invite you please stop by at the booth, take those books, grab the DVDs before they are sold out. And for our non-Muslim guests who are presenting tonight, we have also provided booklets and pamphlets are given away. Absolutely free of charge, so you can collect them on your way out. And um, a couple more announcements. Refreshments have been provided outside, refreshments, so please stop by there at the entrance, the main hall for refreshments. And don't forget, on the 28th of February, our next program, IPSI's next program, in collaboration with other organizations, on the 28th of February, at the School of Social Science in USM, we will organize an interfaith dialogue, an interfaith dialogue involving Muslim, Christians, Buddhists, and Hindu, on the title, How Do We Define God? And you will find this uh, small poster outside available, you can take and distribute. So on the 28th of February, inshallah, 8 to 11 p.m. will be this uh, interview time. So inshallah, we hope to meet you again in another program or as the IPSI. We bid you farewell, have a safe journey, and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. <laughs> Oh,